I love you as well. In part one, we spoke to Ross, a bit of introduction to the game. Speaking to Ross, the chief game designer, and now we're going to speak to John, who's a rally consultant, and just to get some more feedback in, a, in more detail on the handling, as you see me here playing with a controller, very playable with a controller. Uh, I was asked at the time, what did I think of it with a controller? I thought it was absolutely outstanding with a controller, actually. Really easy to get into compared to the original Dirt and compared to a lot of simulator racing games out there. You can tell they're working very hard with the controller to uh, bring the handling together but more chat on that later first I want to ask John again what he brings to uh, Dirt Rally what's what's it all about for him and some of the key new elements you guys can look forward to when the game comes out in uh, early 2019 let's see what he had to say so my role on Dirt Rally 2.0 is to be the consultant for all aspects whether that be car handling pace notes how the audio sounds how level design looks it's really just to make sure the game is authentic as it can be. So the main changes that we've had since Dirt Rally 1 is we've taken apart all aspects of the game and looked at them in high detail. And we've really focused on the tyre model and how that interacts with the surfaces. And um, We think we've got a really good feeling now, and especially with the rear-wheel drive cars, they feel really nice um, on throttle oversteer. So we really feel that it's... It's what we expect of them cars and what the consumer will, will enjoy as well. Um, we've also improved such features as tyre selection, which is new. Um, so you'll be able to choose uh, different compounds before the stages, which means it's really about strategy to make sure you're picking the right tyre to last the full stage. Um, we've also got stage degradation, which means depending on where you run, the stage will evolve. Um, so it's really, if you're starting first on the road, you're going to expect a lot of loose gravel and then sort of 10th place starting on the road you're going to have a sweet surface which is probably optimal and then lower down the ranks is going to get really rough with ruts so it's all about strategy as well. Yeah there'll be there'll be a guide to, uh, and recommendations for what tyres you should choose and also how you should repair your car. So obviously if you start first on the road you're going to experience some loose gravel which is really tricky because it's very easy to slip off the line and also slip off the road and um, so you really need to be careful. It also means you have less traction so it's going to be difficult to keep up with the times from the guy starting further back. Um, and then further down the, the order of the road will just get more rougher as each car passes which means there'll be ruts developing and you need to kind of stay in the ruts like almost like train tracks because if you fall out of the ruts then you're also going to go on to the loose gravel which will uh, push you off off the track so it's really it's all about strategy and getting to grips with how the road evolves and getting through the the tracks because it'll become more rough rough as well which is really sore on the cars the suspension and the tires it'll be more unstable when the track evolves and becomes more rutted because uh, it'll be more bumpier there'll be some loose rocks um, so you really need to stick in in the lines and try not to damage the car I think the favourite thing really is the new features because it brings so much more of a challenge. You know, you can select uh, the wrong tyre for, you know, say there's wet conditions. You could really go out with a hard compound on for dry conditions and you, you really it's going to be a real challenge to get through that stage without making a mistake. Also with surface degradation, it's, it's replicating how a real stage would evolve and that's something that's, to my knowledge, never been done before. So it's really, it really is groundbreaking stuff. So a big thanks to John for his time. After that, of course, we had a demonstration uh, from him, just uh, showing off, uh, showing off his, his, his skills essentially and how the game should be driven properly. I'm going to leave you a bit of this. You'll hear a bit of the live event uh, audio uh, from his uh, car engine sound to a bit of chat from the developer in the background as well. So I'll leave you with this. And in part three, I'll be uh, having a run on this stage on the PS4 Pro version and you'll see a bit of action from that, followed by more coverage looking at the PC version, uh, the uh, rally cross in more detail, and various other coverage of the event, as well as the team chat to come as well. But that's it from me for now. As ever, more soon.
Right, so we're going to talk you through some of the stuff uh, while John continues to play. It's, uh, it's not quite so easy to play with the audio down quite that far. Pump the audio up a little bit if you're back of house and you can hear us. Not too much. And we'll, uh, Ross, come and join me up at the front here. So, obviously, he's very, very good. I mean, he's, he's incredibly good. If you, if you can get anywhere near his time today, you're doing brilliantly. A full sequential gearbox over there. Big clunky job with, uh, with a proper handbrake on it as well. So it's, it's a decent sim setup. But talk to us about the environment and things here, like what, what the improvements have been made. So one of the big things we're really proud of this time around is the uh, track degradation and camber changes we've got going on. So uh, I think uh, John started quite high in the running order um, in this one. So the uh, track's in relatively good, good condition. It'll have been swept uh, by the drivers before him. Uh, players who are starting much further down the order will start to see a lot uh, heavier rutting in the surface. And I start to see material be shifted uh, offline and to the, the outside of the banking. Um, and so, yeah, it, it creates a different challenge uh, depending on, on where you are in, in the event standings and, and what your running order is off the back of that. No, I was always the low budget variety, which meant I was always running at the back on roads which were in terrible conditions. So, oh, unlucky John. Well, you might stand a chance of getting relatively near him. He hasn't properly been there. Um, do, do those road conditions make a difference to the way the car handles, or is it just a visual thing? Uh, you will start to find that uh, cars will move to sort of the outside of the banking uh, with the, that, that loosest material building up and you really have to be careful and, and, and watch your line uh, as, as you're going. Um, once you're, you're on a degraded surface in the wet at night as well, that's, uh, that's when things start to get really hairy. So we've gone away from things like the stage generator which we saw in Dirt 4 and we're, we're back to set stages here. What was the thinking behind it? Uh, so it was one thing that our community were very, very vocal about. They wanted uh, that that bespoke stage feeling where they can they can practice and, and familiarise themselves with the route um, over and over and over. Uh, we have obviously thrown a few things in there, such as, as the track degradation and. Uh, uh, and a few other surprises uh, to catch people out. But um, yes, we felt that, that the spoke stage was the right way to, to go for this project. Um, it's not to say that uh, my stage will, will never be seen again, um, but yeah, this was certainly right for the Dirt Rally 2.0. Um, so you can see he's 29 seconds up. If you look down the left-hand side, you, you get a good idea of where he is in terms of the splits. Uh, John would be fairly uh, high up on the AI, and in fact, he used some of the drivers who work at the studio to, to set the various difficulties in, in terms of what you want to have a crack at. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we've got uh, John and uh, two other incredibly quick guys in the studio, and uh, we sort of evaluate them against each other, see what their percentage different is on uh, any given route and any given car class, um, and then we, we sort of work back from that to work out what our fastest AI time should be. Uh, we then also benchmark uh, some, should we say, more average players um, for where the, uh, the bottom end of the AI should be, um, and then craft a spread between the two of those. Is that what you needed me to have a go when I was in last time, yeah? <laughs> I think you did pretty well. <laughs> That was one of the things I really enjoyed about it was, it, and, and the previous titles were great, but particularly for me with some real experience of, of driving, to come in and play the game and have it feel very much like I remember a front wheel drive car feeling on the loose. I think it's an, you've done an incredible job and I'm not just blowing smoke at this point, it really, really is good. I hope you get to have a go later. So, you know, fantastic. Some work on the tarmac handling model and rallycross as well. Yes, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, we have uh, Ryan Champion and Oliver Solberg coming as well. I mean, Ryan's driven kind of two thirds of the cars uh, across the game. Uh, Oliver obviously has a lot of rallycross experience and uh, we get other, uh, other members of uh, World, World Rallycross to come in and, and have a go. So, yeah, it's about uh, combining all those guys' feedback into, into one, one handling package because we don't have uh, we don't have simulation and arcade as per dirt four. This is all one handling model simulation um, and evaluating those guys' feedback against what our community is saying as well. Because we have some community VIPs who are uh, receiving builds of the game um, and are able to feedback directly with our, our handling team and uh, chat with John and make sure that everybody's on the same page in terms of expectations. And for example, our rear wheel drive cars. Um, was something that we felt we wanted to uh, put a lot of focus on in this title. So the guys have been working super hard on that and yeah, getting it out there for our players to test, for our real life drivers to test. And I feel like we've got those into a, into a really good place now. So you see he really is in a, a decent rhythm here. So when you have a go at this yourselves, you realise just how good John is. So very good rally driver in real life. 
if you do look at the top right of the screen, no pressure on John, he very rarely blinks. I've, I've watched a good 30 seconds there, and uh, that's uh, that's pretty true to life. We sometimes have the onboard cameras in in World Rallycross, and you watch a driver, and they'll only blink on a straight. And again, here, if you look for it, there is just so much going on. The detail in the banks and the degradation, the colours of the banks and things, it just looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, it really does. Um, we've got uh, Jason, our lead environment artist, down here today. Uh, him and his team have been, you know, working uh, knuckles to the grindstone really to uh, to get all the reference in and and really craft something that represents real life. And when uh, Phil Mills was in the other week, we were talking to him about New Zealand and Argentina, and he was blown away with the uh, the kind of the similarities between his real life experiences and what that game. So I think that's a real big uh, testament to, to Jason and his team for how they've got this looking. He was in the same day as me, actually. We, we, I managed to grab lunch with Phil, who's a legend, and he was he genuinely was absolutely raving about Argentina. And he said, I know they'll think it's sales speak when I say that, he said, but it, it really, really looks like it does. If you're familiar with Argentina and some of the stages, I think it's been a Clavera over the top, and uh, there's the very famous bridge, which looks like something out of Indiana Jones with the stone pillars and the ropes across it. That's in the game. I, mean, it's just, I can't wait to get it. Why, is it, why have we got to wait till February? Well, we just want to make sure we've got it absolutely perfect. There's still a few little things for us to uh, to improve and refine. And uh, but yeah.